Hello everybody, Con from Carl is here. And I'm Aswan. And here we have the all new Honda CRV. It's the fifth generation CRV and it comes in four different variants with two different engines. Uh, the base model is the two, two litre, litre two wheel drive. Yes, two litre two wheel drive for 142,200 yeah. ringgit. And then next up is the 1.5 turbo two wheel drive for 155,700 ringgit. And in the 1.5 turbo four wheel drive. Yes. For 161,600. And, uh, and this flagship here, the turbo premium for 167,700 ringgit. It's very good pricing. Very good pricing. And the best part is most of the, the features that you will find, the, the, it start, the, the two liter model actually starts with very, a very a long list of features, which uh, you can see from our, our launch report on carlist.my. Yes. Yeah. So what is different about this one? What, the, now, what do you get? To start, okay, before, let's go, let's go into some background a bit. Before this, Honda only had one uh, SUV model in its lineup. Yeah. This is the first time Honda is launching a new CRV with a right. HRV in place. So okay. right now, it means that the CRV moves up yeah, one, one notch. segment, Correct. right? Yeah. Right. So it means that this car is, can now take on a more premium standing. Okay. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah, it's definitely is larger. Of course, it gets a little bit larger of every generation, but uh, now that HRV has taken over at the low end, it can move on and yeah. properly take over. Um, some people are wondering why they, the two-wheel drive is the premium variant. Yeah. Why, why do you feel, I mean, so far from what they say, it's because the majority of their buyers, they're projecting about 80% of their buyers mm. will buy the two-wheel drive yeah. Yeah. version. And mm. the four-wheel drive version, they find that while some buyers do appreciate the four-wheel drive, um, with the previous generation, 60% of their buyers migrated to two-wheel drive. So, <coughs> the likelihood of someone wanting a very premium version of the CRV, it would probably want it in a two-wheel drive form. They wouldn't need the four-wheel drive. But I would it. think there would still be those who appreciate the option yes, of, of stacking yeah. four-wheel drive together with all that. But we'll see how the sales num how the sales numbers go. Of course. Right. So, but let's start with uh, what what they have in this car. Right. Features. Okay. okay. Look at this. We have we have. LED headlights in front. Yeah. LED headlights. Uh, it has LED daytime running lights and LED signal lights. Yes. And right, it, it looks. This looks properly expensive, right? Correct. And the best here's the best part. Apparently, you, this is also standard right down from the two liter two wheel drive model. Okay. So even if you buy the base spec model, mm -hmm. you're still getting a lot of these good features that exactly you yes. find with this. So time. under the hood. Yeah. Yep. Okay. This is the 1.5 liter VTEC turbo engine, and it is almost the same as the one from the Civic 1.5 liter VTEC turbo. It has 193 PS and Wait, 200. the Civic had 173. Yes, correct. This is slightly more powerful. More powerful. Yeah. Uh, so 243 newton meters yes, of torque. So more torquey also. Yep, torquier yeah. because it is a heavier car. Yep, so you correct. do need a bit more torque. It is still paired with a CVT transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, well, CVT, uh, and in this case, it only transfers powers to the front wheels. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, apart from that, it's you know it's as you expect. It's fairly competitive in segment yeah. in terms of power outputs yeah. And, yeah. and capacity. So it put it puts the the output class about thereabouts with the Tiguan, right? Correct. Uh, it's it's a little Tiguan. bit higher because the Tiguan's are 1.4. Yep. 1.4 turbo and that's pushing about 160 yep. PS around yep. there. Okay. Oh, then of course, if you prefer naturally aspirated. Uh, Power delivery. There's still the base model two liter two wheel drive. Yes. That's paired with a CVT as well. Correct. Yeah. So if we go to the inside, we'll take a look at the additional sort of premium features that you'll see. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So we cannot. Uh, we don't have the the the, the key fob with us, so we can't start the start the car. But uh, quite obviously, you see that this is a this is the uh, this is a cabin with plenty of uh, screen space so called so like you pretty much similar with the civic you have this virtual instrument cluster that has a with a temperature gauge on this side and the fuel gauge on this side this is a, a an lcd screen on itself this one also is another touch screen looks it looks sort of like a freestanding kind of style right yeah correct yeah, yeah, but okay. not not quite so high up as yeah. you find in most yeah. and you can see you have this electric parking brake here People, uh, many people consider this to be a premium feature. But here's the best part. I think we have come to this. What is this? What is this huge receptacle for? Now, this is where you put, unload all your, all your things, right? Including 
your wife's handbag. Wow, that really does fit. Damn, this is huge. That is quite impressive. Yeah. So take this out. There are many ways you can you can configure this space. You can you can make this into a into a into a multi-tiered uh, storage area. Okay. All right. You can even slide this. Very forward. practical. Yeah, that's that's huge. I yeah. mean, Honda has done very well with their more recent products to mm -hmm. improve on mm -hmm. cabin space mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. features. Yeah. And I think this is very. I think I think this this uh, this cabin looks very. Uh, Premium. Yeah, it is one of more one of the more, Honda's more convincing efforts yes. when in in terms of material selection. Honda has always been good in making uh, user friendly cabins, but this one has a very good touch in materials. Yeah, I'll, uh, let's I'll move definitely. to the back. Okay, sure. You don't want to sit with me? No, it's okay. Okay, fine. I'll get I'll get in with you. <laughs> I am a very big person. Right. So in 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 in. In Thailand and Indonesia, they offer this as a seven-seater. Correct. Right? But, and here in Malaysia, one of the, the, the CRV's closer competitors, the X-Trail, is a seven-seater. Yes. Um, so, but Honda Malaysia is only giving the CRV as a five-seater. Yeah, that, that's a question that everyone's going to be asking yeah. about the CRV. And yeah. they find that uh, in markets like Thailand and Indonesia, the primary or the more popular SUVs tend to be things like the Pajero Sport, the Isuzu yeah. MUX. And these cars come are, are designed on a pickup truck platform. They have enough space to fit seven seats sort of comfortably. But the CRV traditionally has been a five-seater. And in those markets, they offer the extra third row because of the market demands. Yeah. But they find that even here, cars that offer a third row, they are usually... Not, as, you, you, not used as often. Yes, correct. Yeah. I mean... And the other disadvantage of adding a third row is it takes away your boot space. I yeah. think you lose about 300 five, liters. 300 liters of boot space. Liters, yeah. So it, it's a trade off in practicality, and Honda's research, or Honda Malaysia's research, has found that it's better to just have it as a five seater rather than a five plus two. I certainly can't argue with the leg room. Definitely. It's, 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 you know, yeah. it's, not, it's not cramped at all. But if you need to use. Let's go, to, let's go and see what the, what the bag has to offer. Hey, you gotta give it some time, lah. Okay, yeah. it's fine. It's an electric tailgate. It's exclusive to the premium model. Okay. So now that we have opened up, this is the this is the the boot in five seater configuration. Okay. How much space are we looking at here? This is five hundred and thirty liters in okay. with the seats up. That's useful. Yeah. yeah. And if you fold it down, it does go up to a thousand liters. Oh, fold it down thousand liters. Let's see yeah. how much is it. So you pull this lever. Yep. And this one and it drops both seats and as you can see it's a completely flat floor yeah which i i love in you know in hatchbacks in suvs yeah yeah makes loading a lot easier and i like that honda has made this tumble folding feature a one-touch mechanical operation yes right that you know it means that you it's easy to use yeah. and without needing to incur the the cost of an electric motor that right. can potentially break down at a later point in time. Yeah, it's one less thing to fail. Yeah, and as you can, and how much space are we looking at here? It looks like quite a lot of space. Compared to the previous generation, yeah. it's actually 250 mm longer, about yeah. 25 cm longer with the seats folded. So that's a lot of additional length if you need to get furniture or other long products. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you carry, but... Yeah, all right. So, um, Concluding thoughts? Well, positioning has changed. As we've discussed before, since the HRV mm -hmm. was launched mm -hmm. uh, between this generation and the previous one, mm -hmm. uh, they've allowed it to go up in size, but it's still not quite as big as the seven seaters that you see yep. on right. the market. It's not right. as big as the Sorento. No, no. It's not as big as the Santa Fe. No. Um, it's not as big as, say, the Outland. Outland is still it's a little bit bigger. Yeah. It's a little bit bigger. But that being said, it's still a very solid contender in its own segment. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. What, what would it fight against? Um, uh, I would say the closest competitor right now uh, would be the Tiguan. Okay. Uh, there were, there's also the Mazda CX-5, the uh, Subaru Forester, 
the uh, Nissan X Trail. Okay. Nissan X Trail is the is the one uh, that you know that will, between this and the Nissan X Trail. We'll see, if we see how these two fare against each other, then we we'll know whether Honda's decision to remove the the third row seats is the right one or not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, in terms of premium features, I feel yeah. that the Tiguan would be the direct competitor if you were to compare feature to All feature, right. right? But then again, if you look at the the two liter two wheel drive model, the CRV is packed pretty pretty decent stuff. Yeah. So even even at its base model, you know, you don't have to opt for a higher spec. Yeah. And you don't yeah. feel like you're yeah. cheapened out. Yeah. The, so the, as a matter of fact, as you move up the spec sheet, now that you come to this one point five uh, premium model. The, on, the only real uh, exclusive items to this to this, this model is Honda's uh, Honda is Honda sensing admittedly very advanced stuff yeah. but it, it, it only boils down to that and the engine of course and the engine yeah. yes okay well that's something to think about if you're considering purchasing a CRV that you know the base model is still a pretty good buy yeah and from from the looks of it it looks like Honda has de delivered a very very decent product definitely another class winner. Possibly, yeah. Possibly. Well, we'll let you decide with your wallets on that. Okay. Yeah. And the uh, full review will be coming out on carlist.my in a couple of weeks or months. Yeah, depending on when we have a chance to get get, get, get our hands on one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it from us. Thank you for watching. Bye.